Next up in the N1 Victory Tournament from Pro Wrestling Noah on August 9, 2024 at Korak and Hall. The fourth match was Luis Monte from Dragon Gate. Straight out of Mexico to Dragon Gate and then a hop and a skip and a jump over to Pro Wrestling Noah's N1 Tournament. Takes on Masa Kitamiya. Look, there's no secret that Kitami is one of my favorites. I love this guy. He's a Samoa Joe type guy. I'm not comparing them directly, but I always like to throw something like that out in case there's somebody listening, watching this video who doesn't know who these wrestlers are. That's a shame, but we don't fault you here. You can come aboard the Ark at any time, and you won't want to leave once you're on board this Ark. It keeps you safe from the choppy, nasty-ass waters of other professional wrestling organizations, which, like I said, have um, not officially invaded. It's not like an NWO storyline, but they have come in as Luis Monte and come into this N1 Victory Tournament. He looks good. I don't know what I think of the guy. I mean, he's a solid wrestler. But I don't know. He's, his look is, he just doesn't look like the kind of wrestler I would greatly enjoy. He looks like like some Rico Suave type dude with a see through shirt that he actually ripped off during this match because I think some buttons popped off or something. His see through shirt and his pleather leather pants against the man, Masa Kitamiya, that looks like he should kill this guy. And for much of this match, this almost 13 minute match, Masa Kitamiya controlled this. I mean, Monte, if he misses his aerial moves, if, if he misses those luchadore moves off the top rope, over the top rope, suicide dives, tope suicidas, he's in trouble. And he missed quite a few of them. And I don't mean like he botched them. I mean, Masa Kitamiya was like having none of it. Basically getting out of the way and allowing this guy to fall on his face, on his back, on his head. And uh, our commentators, uh, Mark Pickering and Stu Fulton, commented that they were kind of surprised at just how much control... Uh, Masa Kitamiya showed here. I I was not, but then these guys know Monte. They're making a big deal out of him. Apparently, he's a former Open the Dragon Gate champion. I've never understood their titles over there in Dragon Gate. On uh, what level that is, I have no idea. Open this gate, open that gate. I I don't watch Dragon Gate. I don't know. I'm not insulting it. I just don't know it. Um, ultimately. I don't really care about this guy. I know it's supposed to be a showcase for him. It's supposed to be an opportunity for Noah to have a big star that's outside their company to come in. But I, I'm i not excited by this guy. But he wins this. He beats Massa Ketamia um, after uh, basically a pretty rough-looking Frankensteiner. But he manages to hold Ketamia down. Ketamia took a lot of punishment from this guy towards the end of the match and did what only Kitamiya can do, pound his chest and roar as if nothing harms him. He got Luis Monte in the prison lock, slowed him down with that move, but ultimately, like I said, Monte came back in desperation in the final, I don't know, three minutes of this match or so. And I'm not saying Monte dominated it, but he sort of came to life, nailed several of his moves, and the last one that sloppy looking frankensteiner held kitamiya down for the three count um this match was fine it's far from my favorite match of the night it's far from my favorite match of the tournament and kitamiya is possibly my favorite wrestler and no him and keno but uh, this match I, I just don't feel i thought this was a styles clash it wasn't sloppy it wasn't bad it just wasn't really for me uh, like if i had to rate it if you twisted my arm like out of five stars i would give it a three and a half and i'm only doing that because i want you to understand that i didn't hate it it wasn't like a mess or anything this match just wasn't for me even though it had one of my favorite guys in kitamiya in it just goes that way sometimes i guess